What's the word, y'all? Man, we back reacting to some more Bleach Report articles. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. Uh, but I got sent this one by Depressed Nets fan. I don't know what you're depressed about, but uh, regardless, one blockbuster trade idea for every NBA team, and he was adamant about it. He sent it to me like four different times, like, can you please react to these bad trades? I'm here to react to some bad trades, so let's get into it. Leave a like on the video, subscribe if you are new. I also have a series where uh, it's called The Ramble, where I sit down and I literally just ramble about basketball. It's been a lot of fun. I dropped the video on that earlier this week. Okay, one blockbuster trade idea for every NBA team by Zach Buckley. If you do not know, I work with Bleach Report on some things, but I am very critical of the articles that are posted here, so don't expect me to hold back at all. So Zach Buckley. No disrespect to you, but if these trades are trash, I'm going to let you know. First, when the Atlanta Hawks blockbuster trade will be trading John Collins and Kevin Herter for the second overall pick. Um, Again, I don't see why this would be a good trade for them. Uh, I asked my audience here, like, why the heck is John Collins with so many trade rumors on Bleach Report? And basically the consensus was, hey, he's going to be up for an extension. And maybe you don't believe he's a max type of player. And he does. Okay, whatever. But if that's the case, I'm still not trading him. I'm still not trading him for and Kevin Herter. Bleach Report just a few weeks ago put out an article, something like the best players under the age of 25, and Kevin Herter and John Collins were on that on that list. So you're gonna trade both of those players for just a second overall pick in a draft that don't really have star star power? L next. Boston Celtics trade Gordon Hayward to the Pacers for Miles Turner, Jeremy Lamb, and Aaron Holiday? Listen, Gordon Hayward had a good season. Don't get me wrong, but this ain't Utah Gordon Hayward still. You gonna trade him for two starters and like a good six man? That's the L for me too, for the Boston Celtics side. I mean, if you're the, if I'm not from the Celtics side, from the Pacers side, if you're the Celtics, you accept this deal in the heartbeat, like boom, 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 bam. I mean, they're playing amazing without him and they'd be up 3-0 right now for us of OG Ananobi, quick jump shot and uh, Cal Lowry's great passing ability. Uh, but yeah, I would do this deal if I'm the Celtics, but why would the Pacers do this deal? You know, what do they benefit from? Especially considering Gordon Hayward's like on the last year of his deal. He's got a player option. It's not like you're trying to free up cap for somebody to sign to Indiana. I don't understand this trade. Next, the Brooklyn Nets trade Karis LeVert and Jared Allen and Nicholas Claxton for Drew Holiday. I'm saying you're 0 for 3 on trade so far, Mr. Buckley. Uh, for the simple fact that, yes, I do think that that Drew Holiday would be an amazing player to put on that Brooklyn Nets team, a team that will need perimeter defense and a guy that could just exist and play not a really ball dominant player but can play some some guard as far as number one guard but i feel like the package is a lot right i feel like the package is a lot jared allen's still up and coming promising big nicholas collection just tweeted yesterday that he's a big guard <laughs> so i don't know what that's about he said he's a big guard and i'm gonna i'm gonna take his word for it right now so oh for three charlotte hornets you trade Nicholas Batum and a 32nd overall pick for Blake Griffin. Sure. Why not take a shot? Why not take a shot on Blake Griffin? I'm a, I'm a, I would be okay with this deal if I'm the Charlotte Hornets. Sure, you're going to have to pay him. But what else are you going to do with that cash? If you're not getting Christian Wood or Montrez Harrell this offseason, sure, take a shot on, on Blake Griffin. We know he can still hoop. Last year was just not a good one, but the year before that, the year before that, he was still good. I would take a shot on Blake, especially for this package. Um, but again, you may be in the, in the camp of like, Hey, we don't want another big contract after getting rid of Nicholas Batum. I would understand that. So I'm gonna give you half of a point. Oh, here we go. Zach Levine and, and Larry marketing for James Johnson back to Chicago, Jared Cover and the number one draft pick. Nah, pass, pass. If, if there is a Zion slash John Redden's class, sure. Maybe we can talk. Maybe, maybe we could talk. I'm not doing this deal. I don't need to explain why I'm not doing this deal. Pass. Cavaliers trade Kevin Love to the Wizards for Thomas Bryant, Is Smith, Jerome Robinson, a 37th overall pick. I'm not against. I wouldn't be against this one. Sure, Kevin Love is about probably a little bit more valuable than that. But getting rid of Kevin Love's contract um, is something. But I know Cavs fans love Kevin Love and they they see him as like a locker room guy, even though he threw like three tantrums this regular season. I, I feel you. I feel you. Um. But you're not you're really not getting anything. Thomas Bryant is a promising player. Jerome Robinson's been on like three teams already in his young NBA career. Actually, I'm going no. Next. <laughs> you shooting Shaq from the free throw lines, Mr. Buckley. Next, we have the Dallas Mavericks, um, who are trading in this instance, Tim Hardaway Jr., Maxi Kleba, 
two first round picks and 18th overall and the 31st overall for CJ. That's a more interesting deal. Tim Hardaway Jr. had a good season. Maxi Kleba fits what Luka does greatly. But with those two players, I think there's a definite ceiling. CJ is good. He can take some secondary ball handling as he's been doing his entire career. Do I do this deal for both sides? Probably not. That's the hard thing about making trades, right? Especially because we're trying to see it from both aspects. Um, I'm still, I think I'm passing on this one too. I'm sorry. Next, Denver Nuggets get. Oh, this is a trade offer that I've seen a bunch, right? So let me see. Let me talk about it. Gary Harris, Michael Porter Jr., and Monte Morris in the 22nd overall pick, which is from Houston for Bradley Beal. I don't absolutely hate this trade for both sides. And here's my explanation of why. The Denver Nuggets get another killer in Bradley Beal. Uh, Jamal Murray is blossoming into to a killer. And Jokic is one of the best bigs in the league. Adding a guy like him, a bona fide star at your guard position is a W. I mean, and for the Washington Wizards, it's all contingent on if you were trying to take a step back and hit that rebuild. They've already said multiple times that Bradley Beal is not available. And I, I do believe them. But if he ever did become available, I don't think this is a bad a bad package for him. Uh, Gary Harris has not been good for like two seasons offensively, but we know defensively he's great. And we've had seasons of him being really good offensively. He had like a 17 point per game season. He hit some big shots and everything. So we know his offense can exist. It just hasn't recently. Michael Porter Jr. has about the highest ceiling of almost anybody in the league right now. Offensively, his defense is a lot to be to be uh, seen. Um, and then Monte Moore is a good backup to John Wall in this instance. One of the few trades so far in this video that I don't absolutely hate for both sides. So, W. First one. Detroit Pistons trade. Derrick Rose to the Lakers. Sign me up! Yes! For both sides, actually. Um, you get a younger player, Cal Kuzma, for the Detroit Pistons. And then Derrick Rose gets to go contend for a championship. Count me in. Come on, man. That's the unbiased me. Send Derrick Rose to the Lakers. I'll take that. Wiggins? Wait, what? Wiggins? Kevon Looney? Jordan Poole, the second overall pick for Ben Simmons and Al Horford. I mean, if you're the Warriors, sure, you do this deal. But the 76ers aren't doing this deal. You can't convince Philly fans that you're going to trade your multiple-time All-Star point guard, two-time All-Star three-year point guard, high-ceiling defensive, all-defensive type player for the second overall pick. We're going back into the process. Wiggins, Wiggins doesn't move the needle at all. If anything, he turns it back when you're getting rid of Ben Simmons. I mean, the main thing is that you want to get rid of that Al Horford contract. It's one of the worst contracts in the league right now. But if you have to attach Ben Simmons to do that, that's an L. Like, think about the lineup that the 76ers would have to roll out there. At point guard, you have Raul Nato. Unless you want to start, let's say Josh Richardson. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. Josh Richardson is the starting point guard. Shooting guard. Matisse Steibel. Small four Wiggins, power forward Tobias Harris, and Joel Embiid. That's not a lineup I, I would want to watch <laughs> or that would really win that many games. I don't think. Maybe they would surprise me. Kevon Looney and Jordan pull off the bench and whatever that second overall pick is. Unless you're like, hey, we want to use that second overall pick to get LaMelo and have him start at the one and then put Josh Richardson and then Wiggs, Tobias, and Joel. Interesting. I just talked myself into it just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. I would still say no. Rockets. Oh. Ew. Ew. I mean, I can see it. But do the Dio Mori is a crazy guy. And I mean that in the in the nicest way possible. Um He would trade for Al Horford. You know, good defender on the on down low. Can stretch the floor for what they want to do on offense. I still don't love it though. Here's the Pacers deal. Victor Oladipo for Kendrick Nunn, Duncan Robinson, and Kelly Olenek. I would do that in a heartbeat if I'm the Pacers. Mostly because we still don't know what we're getting for Vito. And we know Kendrick Nunn is a rookie was really good. And I think that that's going to be his trajectory. Duncan Robinson is one of the best shooters in the NBA. And Kelly Olenek is cool. Right? Does, does Miami want to deal? Miami fans got this thing where they love the Photoshop players in their jerseys. You're going to have to give somebody up to get make it happen. So are you okay with giving up these two young players here in Kendrick Nunn and Duncan Robinson for a VO that is a question mark? You let me know. Next, we got the Clippers. A sign and trade. Dang, Landry Chevy getting traded again. Montrezl Harrell signed and trade for Steven Adams. 
I mean, sure, I could see that from the Clippers aspect, I guess. I guess. No, that no, no. That's that doesn't move the needle for either of those two teams. Lakers, Kuzma, Danny Grant, KCP, and Alex Caruso for Chris Paul. This is a bad trade for the OKC Thunder. What asset do they get in here that they can look at and be like, okay, it's worth giving up our all-star? And again, I do believe Chris Paul will be traded soon. The video that he posted on, on Twitter yesterday was like, okay, this I'm it's just good year at OKC, but it's time for, for me to dip. But this is not enough for him. You know, there's no future asset here. Again, Cal Kuz was a good young player, but no, no, this is not a deal. This is not a deal that Sam Presti would do. Sam Presti's too smart to do something like this. And again, Sam Presti has missed on some trades before, looking at you, the James Harden trade. Um, but still, no, no. Justice Winslow, Cal Anderson, and Grayson Alley for, Allen for Buddy Hill. Yo, Buddy Hill alongside Ja? Whew, I'll take that in a heartbeat. Now, the real question is, will the Kings take that? Don't think so. Don't think so. Justice Winslow hasn't played in like six seasons, I feel like. Cal Anderson is just okay. I mean, he shouldn't even really be that much of a starter in this league. He should be like a backup, bro. And Grayson Allen can be all right. Be you trade? I know Buddy Hill will, again, one of those players that probably will get dealt. But I think there's a better deal you can get than this Miami Heat Bam Adebayo Duncan Robinson and Kendrick Nunn and Kelly Olenek for Joe Well. am I crazy for not wanting to do this deal for the Heat because again you're getting like one of the top two centers in the league maybe he's one maybe he's two I don't know you tell me but you're also giving like the fourth best center in the league up who's way younger you're giving up the one of the best shooters in the league. and an, uh, I don't really love this trade for, for Miami. I don't. But for the 76ers aspect, if they were going to trade Joel, I don't think this is a bad package for him. Bam Adebayo? But he would have to switch his role playing alongside Ben Simmons. I don't know. I don't know. The Bucks. Okay, let's talk about the Bucks trade. Eric Bledsoe, Dante DiVincenzo. This is a way better trade for Chris Paul than the other one. It just, it just is. Dante DiVincenzo is a nice up-and-coming player. And though he hasn't played great in the playoffs, I believe Dante DiVincenzo is going to be a nice role player throughout the course of his career. You get another draft pick, which is what Sam Presti and them really like. You get Eric Bledsoe, who's still good. He's not great, but he's still good. And you can take a chance with DJ Wilson, who's just been kind of there and sucking when he does get into the game. I, I like this trade a lot better than the other trade that they put in with the Lakers. I can't be the only one, right? And you get, you get the pick. You get the pick. Memphis Grizzlies... Oh, no. Whoa. Minnesota Timberwolves also take a trade at Victor Ladipo. You're trading the first overall pick? I'm saying no. I don't even want to know the rest of the pieces. You're going to trade the first overall pick for Victor Ladipo, who, again, has not looked the same, and we don't know what he's going to be? I can't do that deal. The first overall pick? Pass. Drew Holiday to the Heat. Duncan Robinson, Kendrick Nunn, and Kelly Olenek has been in, like, seven trades so far. The Knicks, Mitchell Robinson, and the eighth pick to move up to the second pick. Now, this is if the Knicks love, like, LaMelo, or they love somebody that's in that realm that they couldn't get at eight. Mitchell Robinson's good, though, man. I wouldn't trade Mitchell Robinson at this moment unless you like, LaMelo, LaMelo, we are 100% certain that LaMelo is going to bring a new spark to New York. Then, sure, you trade Mitchell Robinson. But Mitchell Robinson's such a good player. The only problem is his past coaches hasn't been playing him, and I feel like Tom Thibodeau's going to play him because he's a good defender. He's a good defender. So do you trade him to move up six spots in the draft? Unless you're 100% certain that LaMelo is the real deal, I don't do this deal. If you know that LaMelo is the real deal, sure, go get that guard. Go get the guard over the big man any day. Any day. Even though Mitchell Robinson is in the gym right now saucing people up like he is a big guard. Like he's Nicholas Claxton. Okay, see, bro, that's lazy writing. That's literally the same trade from up here. That's lazy writing. Orlando trades Vucevic. Ooh. Alpha Rook to the Warriors for Wiggins, Jordan Poole, and second overall pick. If I'm the Magic, done deal. Hello? Yes. Yes. Deal. Vucevic is cool. Vucevic is good. But there's a ceiling on this Orlando Magic team, and that's like, let's make it to the seventh, eighth seed, and let's win one game in the playoffs, and that's it. You get the second overall pick. You could potentially get LaMelo. You could get another player. You could get double O. You could get a lot of players. I would do this deal in a heartbeat if i'm the orlando magic and if i'm if i'm the hmm, if i'm the warriors i don't think i like this deal amazingly but like you get a center you get a wing player that has shown before he got injured that he can hit his shots when he was with portland 76 is trade toby 
Josh Richardson for Harrison Barnes and Buddy Hill. Yikes. What does this do, though? You get off that huge contract, I guess. But Harrison Barnes just signed a big old extension, too. I don't like that deal because you don't do anything. You're exchanging big money for big money. The Suns, Aaron Gordon. I like this deal for the simple fact that the Suns looked really good without Kelly Oubre in the bubble. Uh, but that would mean if you're getting Aaron Gordon, you would have to move campaign, uh, not campaign, Cam Johnson or Mikel Bridges to the bench. And I think that three and that four worked perfectly together in the bubble. I mean, yes, it worked. They were undefeated. They worked perfectly. But I do like this deal. Maybe Cam Johnson comes off the bench for a year. Or maybe, shoot, maybe it is uh, Mikel Bridges that comes off the bench. And you let Cam Johnson run the run the three, even though he probably doesn't have to. I would start Mikel. Start Mikel. He's the better, way better defender. I like this deal. I like this deal. And if I'm the Magic, I'm taking any deal because you're just stuck right now. Portland Trailblazers, the Ben Simmons trade, CJ. I've seen trades like this all the time. And I do not hate deals like this. For both sides. Here it is. CJ, Anthony Simons, 16th overall pick in the 2022 first round pick that's top five protected for Ben Simmons. That adds a whole nother aspect to the Portland Trail Blazers. That would be amazing. And then it's, a, it's just a different feel for Philly. They allowed the game to open up for Joel. And you also have a killer in CJ. I don't hate this deal. I don't think this is a bad deal. I don't think it's a great deal, but I don't hate it. If this trade were to happen the first day of the offseason, I wouldn't be so like I wouldn't be like, oh, somebody got robbed, but I also wouldn't be like, oh, somebody really, really I mean, I guess the person that really, really wins this is Portland. Yeah. Sacramento Kings, Buddy Hill for Lamarcus, pass, uh, Spurs, Lamarcus, Derek White for Karis LeVerger. Oh, that's a big old package. That's a big old package for LaMarcus and Derek White. And Derek White's good. LaMarcus is still good. But that feels like a, a lot of assets. Maybe I'm overvaluing players in this whole video. And let me know if I am. But that seems like a big old package. The Raptors a sign and trade for Victor Oladipo. I mean, I, sure, because you'll get it something out of nothing. Because he doesn't have to sign and trade. He could just walk to another team. Um, So, sure, Malcolm Brogdon and, and Freddie playing together. I don't hate that. I wouldn't hate that at all. Utah, Rudy Gobert in the 23rd overall pick for Joe. <laughs> Utah would probably do this deal in a heartbeat. Why would Philly do this deal, though? You're going to have to pay Rudy Gobert next year. Why would you even want to do that? I don't think you want to do that. Washington Wizards, Bradley Beal, and this is the same trade from earlier. Overall, I love reading these articles. I'm never really in love with the content. I mean, I love it because it is content, but I don't love it like if these trades were to happen. Um, everybody does a benefit. But that's what trades are. If you enjoyed it, leave it a like. I'll be back. Peace.